All right, we're here in Josh Whitman's office, Illinois Athletic Director, kind enough to join us here on the Illini Enquirer podcast. Josh, appreciate it after what has been a, a busy spring year for you guys already. It has been a busy but but exciting spring, and uh, glad to have a chance to, to sit down and chat a bit. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. I want to start with basketball. How can we not with the men's basketball run that we had? Um, Illinois gets to an Elite Eight for the first time in 19 years third Big Ten title banner that this program has won. What were those three weekends in March like traveling with the team? I was there traveling with the team, but you as the leader of this athletic department, what was that like for you? It was, as you would imagine, so much fun for for me, for my family, for all of our fans, just to have a chance to take the Illini show on the road and and get out and and experience the postseason in such a meaningful way. Uh, Great memories from Minneapolis, obviously, and then and then to Omaha, and, and then culminating with Boston. It was uh, something that we've worked for for a long time, and and uh, just really happy to have had a chance to play some role in it and, and to be a part of it. It was something that uh, certainly will will not soon forget. Obviously, you remember the games, those things. Were there any moments that that you'll cherish forever from those? I, I think a lot of it was just the enthusiasm from our fans. I think just being able to get out and and visit some of the establishments and be around and go to like in Boston the the fan events that we had just across the street from the garden and to see the enthusiasm and the excitement that uh, that they were enjoying in those moments knowing that we had a a gap there a a generation of fans who didn't have this level of success to to cheer for now over these last four or five years we we really I think connected with a, a new population of Illini fans, parents who are raising their kids, as you and I can appreciate, and, and, and hopefully, you know, capturing their imaginations, their hearts, and, and uh, putting us in a position to, to continue to keep them a part of our program for years to come. I want to ask you about that, because when you made a coaching change, uh, you know, seven years ago, you talked about how it had been 10 years since the program had been at that level, and if you're not careful, it'll be 30 years from there. So seven years later, when you have three Big Ten title banners, you have an Elite Eight run like that, and you knew you were knocking at the door all that time. I know there's more you guys want to accomplish as a program, but you have to get the guy right, first of all. So what what has made Brad Underwood the right guy to lead this program? Brad has been everything we thought he would be, but but so much more. I, I, I think so often in those circumstances, it's about finding the, the intersection between the guy – the, the timing, the opportunity, it, it's really trying to bring all those different factors to a head at the same moment. And, and, and Brad has just been so resolute and determined in his approach. He has a very strong sense of programmatic identity. He knows what he wants our fighting line on men's basketball team to, to, to look and play like on a, on a night-to-night, week-to-week basis. Uh, he is... Uh, very committed to a, a certain approach in terms of our, our toughness, our resiliency, our preparation, our physicality. Uh, and and I, I think that's really, really critical in today's day and age, especially with the in and out and the, and the turnover that happens in, in uh, staffing and players. And I, I think you have to have some, some building blocks that are going to be consistent from year to year. And, and, and I think the identity that he's brought to this program has, has really been – central to our success and I give him all the credit in the world for the way that he has instilled that and been able to carry it forward now through multiple generations of players and and a lot of new faces throughout the program. Obviously it takes support though to do that so what do you feel like you've given him or the the athletic department has given him to make it successful because obviously you have to keep that coach and I know you know his name gets brought up a lot of times you have to give him a staff so uh, what does it take to to keep that guy to you know build the program up around him I I think the key is is just us having a, a really strong relationship that's built on trust it's built on communication we have shared values and we have shared goals and having the opportunity to, to work with him on a daily basis and understand where the gaps are, where are the places that we need to continue to improve. Uh, my job as the athletic director is, is to clear the path, is to make sure that the path in front of him has as few obstacles as possible so that he can be all gas, no brakes. And, and sometimes I'll identify what some of those potential 
uh, roadblocks might be, and, and other times he does, but, but we have to work together to, to find where they exist, and then and depending on what they are, maybe those are things that I'm responsible for trying to move out of the way, and other situations, they may be things that, that he's responsible for, but we collaborate, we talk constantly, and, uh, and just try and put him in a position to, to chase those championships. We, as programs, our, our job is to hire hyper-competitive people who have the same goals and vision that we do and then to support them with the resources and 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 the infrastructure such that they can realize those goals and I, I think that's been really critical to his tenure thus far and, and I, I really look forward to continue to work together in the way that we have in the years ahead obviously Ubbin is, is a part of that for both him and Shauna uh and, and staffing support staff I know for Brett Bielma that that's important Shauna that's important uh and Brad that's important and three years ago you lose all the assistance and he builds up a staff no Chester is on his way out here um just what, what do you make of Chester's time with Illinois being a part of that success and where you guys go in the for, in future with Brad's staff I think it just solidifies Chester's legacy with our program for him to have worn the uniform and, and to be able to do the things that he did as a player but then to return now in a professional capacity different role than mine obviously but you know similar in the sense that that you you have different perspectives than other people just because you've had the good fortune to compete for this university and and to be able to to hang a couple banners during his tenure to be able to to really build this program he certainly has his fingerprints on that and I know it's something that he's very proud of and and we look forward to him staying connected to this program for years to come uh, both as a now a former staff member but more importantly as a as a former player and and so hopefully that's something that is a tie that will bind him to us for the rest of his life. And how do you guys keep raising the bar of, of, of what this has become? Because you guys aren't knocking on that door of, of where you want to be in, in the top tier of college basketball. Here. I, I think that's really incumbent on us now, especially as we head into an off season. It, there's the old book now that you know, good is the enemy of great, and and we have to make sure that we avoid complacency at all costs. And and so it's it's important for for Brad to continue to pushes players, pushes staff. It's important for me to continue to push our staff and, and make sure that we're supporting the program in the way that we need to. Uh, and and I, I feel confident that between him and, and me, that will continue to happen. We, we're both incredibly competitive, highly hungry. I think if anything, these last few years has just sort of wet our appetite and let us know, okay, this is this is what we want. This is where we want to be. These are the conversations we want to be a part of. These are the games we want to play in. Now let's keep doing it. Let's yeah. find ways to continue to elevate this basketball program and, and take full advantage of the momentum that we've been able to build here these last few years. Speaking of momentum, it felt like Shauna's program regained that momentum with a, a WBIT title run, which I know after an NCAA tournament, you know, people want to get back there, right? But I mean, for this program, Josh, we know this, is, this has been a great two years for them. So what, what do you think that meant? What has this two years meant for that program to get them back to just competitiveness and you know success here it's been so rewarding just to watch the progress that they've made and and we don't have as, as much history in that program as we do certainly on the men's side and in some of our other sports and and that was part of the conversation with shauna when i first met with her and when we first entered our into our recruitment of her this idea that there are pages in our record book that are waiting to be written. There, there is a legacy here waiting to be built. And that doesn't appeal to everybody. Some people want to go and do the same things that other people have already done. Uh, but I saw something in her that suggested to me that that was something that might matter to her, that we've got a program with 50 years of history and, and there have been some moments, but there hasn't been sort of that long standing run from a, from a coach and, and a team and, and I thought that that was something that, that would excite her. And, and I think I was right. And, and I, I think that we now carry that message forward in the recruiting space with the student athletes. And there's a chance here to do some things that have never been done before. And, uh, you know, there was a great interaction. Camille Hobby's mom came up to me on the court after the WBIT. And she grabbed me. And she said, you may not remember this, but when we were being recruited to come to Illinois, we sat on the couch in your office and you told us that if we came here and did something special that had never been done before, this is a place where we could leave a legacy and make a mark. And she said, 
that just happened and it was just a really profound sort of full circle moment for me knowing the kinds of things that we talked to the recruits about and then seeing that develop in the way that it has um super excited about what sean has been able to do and and where that program's headed you were right but did you know it was going to happen this quickly? Like, come on. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. I don't think anybody did. And right. I think even if you if you put Shauna in a dark room and put her on a lie detector <laughs> test, I don't know that she thought it would happen this quickly. Uh, I, I remember distinctly the very first practice that they had under her. I was there, and practice was over, and we all kind of looked at each other like we got a lot of work to do. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there, there's some some road to go here, and again give her all the credit the the incredible staff that she's been able to assemble the culture that she's been able to instill the level of belief that those players have in each other and in their in their coaches Uh, it's all just uh, come together at at the right moment and and we're seeing the results and um, what an exciting run we were on obviously and and Shauna wasn't shy about this we want to be in the NCAA tournament we intend to be in the NCAA tournament but shoot if we're not going to be why not go win the very first WBIT and uh, what a great experience it was for our players and in our program and we look forward to using it as a springboard into next year obviously you can't tell the story of this winter without the unprecedented uh, case of Terrence Shannon Jr. and everything that happened there I know him and his legal team have dropped their case against the university Josh and I know there's probably only so much you can say about it but at the same time is there anything now looking back that the university, yourself, whatever it is, you look back and say this could have been different or you could have changed? I know the policy that you had, the student misconduct policy. Is there anything that has to change because of all of this? I mean, this had to be unprecedented as an athletic director to go through. It was. It was a difficult experience for everybody involved and, and certainly – uh, as we've said from the very beginning, uh, an experience that's unfortunate on, on so many levels and, and and most importantly for the people who are at the center of it, the athletic program, the athletic director, we're just sort of side players in, in the entire situation. Um, but it, it was difficult. Uh, it was unlike anything I've ever experienced and now almost 15 years in a role like this one. Um, I, I think that you know we are always learning, we're always growing. Uh, we will certainly take some time this spring, as we do every spring, to evaluate the year, to consider uh, opportunities to to revise or, or adjust policy. Uh, and I, I think we'll have more to share on that probably during the event that we do in, mm-hmm. in June. Um, but I think that at the end of the day, I'm, I'm confident with, with how we handled the situation. Um, and I'm um, you know, looking forward to, again, learning from things and, and moving forward. Is, is it going to be – like is he a different case, though, because of his NIL capabilities, because of uh, his NBA potential? Is, is he a rarity of, of what could be tested legally? I'm not, I'm not a lawyer, so you are. Yeah, I, I don't want to get into the, too much detail in terms of the, the judge's opinion, but it, it, there were some – some novel concepts that she introduced that, that I had not seen discussed in a legal setting mm-hmm. prior. And and I, I think it, it certainly did prompt some questions about how we go forward in terms of handling student-athlete discipline, misconduct. Are things like their stature, their earning potential, their future professional prospects, are those things that we need to consider as we go forward? Um, all really good questions that, that, that we need to spend some time evaluating during the months ahead. I know you like to address these at your annual roundtable, but you can't ignore like what is happening in college athletics with all the change that is happening. And we just mentioned NIL there, Josh. First from internally, um, I know you've been very progressive about welcoming NIL and, and seeing it as an opportunity for your program several years into this with what ICON is doing and aligning with you guys. How do you feel Illinois has positioned itself for NIL, however long it lasts in, in this type of setting? I, I think we've positioned ourselves well. I, I, I really give Kathleen Knight a, a tremendous amount of credit. She, of course, left our organization, started a new business from scratch. She's essentially a, a small business operator with, with ICON, plays an incredibly influential role in, in the success and in future of our program. Uh, I, I think that 
It is a very professionally run organization. I think our student athletes benefit from her professionalism, from the work that she and, and her board and her staff do on behalf of our student athletes uh, and of the, the folks who are in a position to contribute to ICON. Uh, I, I think that we always need to continue to generate more resources. That, I think, as long as this current iteration of NIL is in place, will always be the order of the day. Is nobody ever, I think, feels like they have enough resources in their collective. Uh, and so we're working as aggressively as we can and, and as creatively as we can to try and identify ways um, to, to continue to push resources that, that direction. Um, but on the whole, I, I feel really good about where we are, but yet very much aware that, that we need to continue to grow. I, th I think anybody that's watching this is, is thinking that this is becoming pay for play. And I know Charlie Baker, NCAA president, is wanting federal legislation. You and I know anything passing through this Congress is going to be difficult, uh, especially with the NCAA. Um, you got the Dartmouth men's basketball team, you know, unionizing, all those things. Josh, like, where, where do you see this going? Like, where, where do you think in the next year or two, does this change completely or is it going to be status quo with, with NIL? I don't know that we'll see a lot of meaningful change in the next year or two. I, I do think that three to five to seven years, I, I think, will mark a, a pretty dramatic reform period in college athletics. And I, I think that even this week, uh, the NCAA, the Division One Council, which I'm a part of, will consider some some pretty advanced changes to the NIL guidelines that will allow institutions like ours to become more directly involved in uh, facilitating and, and uh, assisting in creating some of these NIL opportunities on behalf of our student athletes. What's the impact of that? The impact, I, I think, is that it, it allows schools to have a little more ownership in, in how uh, those deals get done. I, I do think that it, it potentially creates uh, more Title IX expectation, which I think is a good thing. Um, that that programs like ours will 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 dedicate equal effort uh, to creating these opportunities on behalf of their student athletes. It may not yield mm -hmm. equal results, but at least put forward equal effort in, in trying to to generate those opportunities for both our male and our female student athletes. I think that at the end of the day, though, even with these rules changes, we are contorting ourselves into knots just so we can say that we aren't the ones paying the student athletes. Mm -hmm. And and we've continued to draw a very bright line and, and now we're going to be able to facilitate the deals. We're going to be able to go to a donor and say, I'd like Jeremy Warner to get a $50,000 NIL deal but yet we're going to funnel that money out through the collective and then back over to the to Jeremy Warner's pockets instead of having more complete ownership right. and control of the entire process. I think that over time that will find its way uh, into the reform process and that, that we will identify a more efficient, thoughtful, probably um, well-reasoned approach that, that – um, maybe addresses some of those some of those um, logistical hurdles that we've basically constructed for ourselves the, the last big one i have for you just looking at this since you are in division one council and all of that i mean you're part of these conversations you're part of a big 10 which is situated itself extremely well the sec has situated itself extremely well so when i read about the super league and things like that i'm like the big 10 and sec is going to want to continue to hold the power that they have so, but we see a Pac-12 just dissolve before our eyes. What does actual reform for what the future of college football looks like, the future of college athletics in alignment with each other? Um, are, are we heading towards two Super Leagues and everybody else? Because, Josh, I don't know if, anybody, if everybody wants that, uh, if all the fans want that, but it feels like that's the direction we're going. So how do you guys navigate the path forward? That's the trick. <laughs> I, I think that one of the early questions that has to be answered is who's in the room mm -hmm. and, and so is are, are we looking to develop solutions as a Big Ten conference are we looking to develop solutions as the Big Ten and the SEC the Power Five the FBS mm -hmm. the NCAA 
what is the size of the group that we're trying to engage as we look to develop solutions. And, and I think that's a really critical threshold question that, that we have to answer on, on some level. That said, I, I think that we've also learned over the last 10 years that the diversity of membership that exists in college athletics on one hand is a tremendous strength. You have schools from all across the country, all different compositions. It also can be a, a challenge in these moments when you have to make revolutionary change. And in, in order to, to enact that kind of change, I, I think there's going to have to be really strong leadership from the conferences and the individuals who are in a position to exert that leadership. and. Ultimately, it, it will be, I, I think, incumbent on the NCAA and, and some of those most strongly positioned conferences to demonstrate a willingness to make change that, that can lead the entirety of the organization forward. And that that will be an ongoing mm -hmm. effort for, for some time, I would imagine. All right, but as we wrap up here, Josh, I want to I give you the floor. I know there's topics you really care about that maybe – we in the media don't talk enough about the fans don't know enough about it. Is there a topic that, that you feel we should be talking about more as media or fans should know a little bit more about when it comes to the college athletics or even just Illinois in general? I, I think on the Illinois front, I, I, I think it's important that we, we know we just spent however long talking. We didn't talk one bit about Illinois football, right? And, and the reality is that, you know, we're, we are incredibly excited about what's happening with our football team. I, I think one of the, uh, the byproducts of advancing as far as we did in the spring with the basketball programs is that spring football has been happening this whole time and, right. and just hasn't had the the platform to sort of gather the headlines that you would ordinarily see during the spring and uh, really excited about uh, the fan enthusiasm that exists right now for Illinois football. We uh, just surpassed, I think, 3,000 new season tickets this year, which is uh, another benchmark for us. We were within spitting distance of selling as many season tickets sitting here in, in mid-April as we did all of last year uh, and so uh, the, the fans have clearly demonstrated that, that they're excited about what's happening. We we are emphasizing that fan experience with, with everything that we do. We created a new office a year ago led by Cassie Arner that, that is dedicated entirely to making sure that our, our fans have just a world-class experience from the time they leave their garages until they come home at night, uh, including outside the stadium, inside the stadium. We hope that our fans continue to feel those changes. We've got lists of dozens of things that we're looking to implement uh, or, or already have implemented in some cases. Uh, and, and so there's just a lot, I, I think, to be enthusiastic about with, with our football program. Brett Bielma, having been around football most of my life now and, and having had the opportunity to be around some of the great coaches I've never been around another one like him, and and the, the the ability that he has to implement a vision to teach his student athletes to marshal such a large staff and, and point them in the same direction, his attention to detail, uh, there's just not anything that he doesn't do well, and that I think bodes incredibly well for for where this program's headed, and uh, just want to continue to encourage fans to to support. Uh, fighting line at football and, and look forward to seeing everybody in the fall. Josh Whitman, Illinois Athletic Director, really appreciate the time and insight and for sharing all that with the fans. Appreciate you. Thank you, Jeremy.